It has everything. Bumping in, banging <laughs> Big Boy's Big Neighborhood. Boy. All righty, man. Romeo is in the neighborhood. Ooh. Romeo Miller. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That's that's crazy, man. We uh-huh. we we don't watch you grow up, brother. Yeah, bro. <laughs> you don't, and that's real hair on your face yeah. this time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I remember when it used to be fake hair. Yeah, it's a blessing, man. Just I heard to, that, you know, man. To grow up in this industry and then just to to have a, a pops like I have because I could have went a whole different direction. Mm-hmm. It's not easy. You could get lost in the shuffle. Hell you know? yeah. So even with you, you know, you've been there from day one. So, you know, it's all love. You, always, you like family man. to me. It's always been. Always. Been Shoot me a Wraith or a Rose Royce or whatever they are. <laughs> <laughs> you got one we of those. really family. <laughs> I see what y'all rolling in. <laughs> oh, man. It ain't one family member that ain't got one. So if I'm family, <laughs> send something over. Believe that, man. But you know what's the trip about that, Romeo? Just growing up in the business. like, And usually, man, you know, so-called, you know, you you here today, gone tonight. The business is mm-hmm. fickle. Nobody really has, you know, there's only few that have long careers. And especially yeah. when it comes to when we get introduced to somebody when they're so young. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They don't take that 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 ride over. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you have taken that ride where it's like, man, like you're a grown man and people see you as a grown man. Yeah. Well, that was something that was very important to me. I've always been a student of the game, you know, uh. Mm-hmm. That's probably because I love playing sports. You know, I always call basketball the game of life. And I always studied everything. I watched people's careers from, I don't care, from Will Smith to Justin Timberlake. And I was like, what did these guys do different from Mm so-and-so? And the difference is, it's like, you got to grow up. A lot of kids, when you're a child celebrity, you don't realize that everything is kind of given to you that mm. you don't realize what failure is mm-hmm. and that's the problem that's why i wanted to go to college i put my career on hold a lot of people don't know mm-hmm. nickelodeon offered me four more seasons unlimited movie deal and i said i'm gonna go to college at the age of nice. 17 i went to college and i wanted to grow up and that's what child stars they don't get that opportunity mm-hmm. you got to imagine if you have everything this if you have your most success as a kid then when you fail at yeah. one time it's going to be, go overboard. And you're going to constantly chase that high. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah. you, you and just, that's something that Justin Bieber got to know. So I've, I've always had this thing where I felt like I should have had, I should have a talk with him. We was mm-hmm. neighbors and everything. I feel like God tried to make me cross, uh, make us cross those paths. But um, it's one of those things where when you're so high, you got to realize Justin Bieber not always going to be Justin Bieber. He got to know that. But his low isn't going to be, you know, my low, your low, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Ashley from Kentucky low. His right. low may still be all the way up there, but he has to know that mentally. And that's what you know as an adult. That's why Will Smith was able to be successful because you're appreciative. That's why you're mm-hmm. successful because you're appreciative. And that's what I just, that's what I learned, you know, just stepping back from everything and being in college. Man, and you continue to work though. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, and, and just when it came Great. to the empire that your family built. You know what I'm saying? When we say no limit, it was absolutely no limit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And still to this day, it's yeah. absolutely no limit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like people don't understand, even if you don't hear Pops, Master P on the radio, that dude is, y'all knocking yeah. down way more bread. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like for real, I would yeah. have at the eight, because with my first introduction to you, you was probably what, Rome? 10? Like 10 if and that, a half. Good gosh. Yeah. Like 10 so and a half. Young. At 10 and a half, <laughs> if my dad had a fraction of what your family yeah. had, yeah. I would have <laughs> never worked. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> what made you aspire to go get your own? Yeah. Well, people don't understand uh, my upbringing is not what people think. You know, my favorite cousin in jail for life, you know, mm-hmm. my uncle mm-hmm. C in jail, you know, free my uncle C. But, um, my aunties are in jail. I got family members that died from, you know, drug overdose, et cetera, et cetera. So I've seen both sides and I know what it is to, you know, to mm. not have it. Mm. You know, my dad always said, never let them see you sweat. That's what our family is good at. But I literally, I'll be at my friend's house playing basketball and we'll have to hide when a car come because we'll think it's a drive by. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's a difference with how I'm growing up versus my little brothers there in Calabasas behind Double Gates. You know, my dad still, when he was young and Master P, just because he was making money, your life don't change overnight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, so I, I, I was always appreciative. I was grateful, and something. My two cousins passed away when I was nine, and then when I was thirteen, and I saw that up close. So seeing death as a little kid, it put things in perspective for me, and it right. made me know that look, this is a blessing to be here. Why not make the most out of each day? 
So I don't care if I got a billion dollars. I'm still going to be the hardest down working in the room because just because you have money don't mean you can't go out and chase your dreams. I heard you know, that. money comes and goes. Nah, that when it go away one day. I'm going to tell you straight up, man. Hustle. You let me get a billion, I'm done. <laughs> I love your hustle, so but you let me get a billion, Rome. I'm done. <laughs> growing Up Hip Hop, second season. For those out there, man, what is Growing Up Hip Hop? Man, Growing Up Hip Hop, man, it's a dream. Like, I can't even tell you things. Like, the life I live, it's like some Richie Rich stuff. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> growing Up, you know, which with a pops like Master P and then having one of the biggest independent record labels, you know, I can't even describe it. Mm -hmm. And the TV yeah. show is, yeah. it, 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 it's just... Uh, the cast is pretty much similar, you know what yeah. I'm saying, to to your growing up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you got the, the famous kids or the famous family members of, like, Jam Master J, the Barge family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Dame Dash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where cats, you know, they grew up and seen a whole lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So with, with the show itself, what does the show consist of? Yeah, uh, growing up hip-hop season two, you know, um, this season we was a lot more vulnerable. You know, people know about the the empires. They know about No Limit. They know about Rockefellers. Mm -hmm. They know about Run DMC. But what you don't know is the family struggles. Mm -hmm. You know, you you see this and you don't, people don't think that you're human just because you have all this success. Mm -hmm. this right. Morning. So this season, uh, you know, coming on today, you know, WeTV, Tune Hello. In, you know, uh, 9, 8 Central. Go ahead now. But uh, this season is more vulnerable because you get to see we got real life issues. You know, I don't want to give it away. But right. They have a lot of things but on there you can relate to. This season also, man, for what I understand, you're going to go even deeper just in into Romeo Miller's life as well, correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of things, you know. It's no secret my pops and mom are going through a very public mm -hmm. divorce. So mm -hmm. you kind of see the how I deal with that situation. A lot of people don't realize that the kids actually get that the worst, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. because you're in the middle of everything. And then when you have money, and all this stuff is just a whole nother beast. It's actually like the real, the real life empire. If you watch the show Empire, I could relate to that show with certain moments on mm -hmm. there with family because, like they say, money is the root of all evil. Right, and it doesn't yeah. it doesn't make anything disappear. If yeah. anything, it shines more of a light on it. Yeah. No, Jim Carrey have one of my favorite quotes. I remember he said something. It was something like he said, "I wish everybody could become rich and famous and accomplish their dreams," because that's not the answer. Mm. You know, it's not. That's what people don't understand. You can give somebody a billion dollars. I know you're gonna retire. You get that billion. Yeah, I ain't. But that don't mean I'm just gonna, talking about me. You gonna have happiness, right? Exactly, yeah. man. And then for the things that you really, really love, like you can yeah. pay the light bill, so on and so forth. Right. But the things that you really, really love, you can't cut a check to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's not a check I could write that could bring my mom back. Yeah, there's not a check I could write that to get my brother out of that stroke bed. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So exactly. the real things is like, yeah, I could pay my rent. We could pay our rent. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I can, well, I don't dress like nothing, but I can, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give me another one of these hoodies. You know what I'm saying? But, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's not a woe is me. We get a chance to really see what, 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 what really people go through. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, and that's the cool thing. Like my dad was like, look, we just going to open up, you know, we're going to let the world in. And this season, it's like a roller coaster ride because you get to see not what only I go through, but even what I go through with my friends, the other characters on the show are going through with their family members. You know, uh, Kristenia finding out her, she may have a, a sister that's, oh. you know, a, a Jackson. Damn. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? I, saw the, wow. I saw the trailer for what? that. I'm yeah. like, what? what the hell? So it's just a lot on here. You know, you, you kind of get to see how we have to go through uh, everyday life. And it's actually very similar to to everybody out there. Mm, man, in a way. So, in a way. Right, right, right. <laughs> in a so, way. So that's every Thursday night, man. Every Thursday night, yeah. we TV. Make sure you guys check it out, man. It's growing up hip hop. Which growing you, up hip hop. Would you have done? How has the set of Empire been? Man, the set of Empire has been lovely. You know, you know, uh it's one of those dreams come true roles mm -hmm. for me. And to be a part of like this is my real life. I am the real <laughs> Empire, you know, having a Pops Master P who's mm -hmm. really a music mogul, a mm -hmm. pioneer. And the things that we go through, it's kind of like I'm reliving life on set, but it's dope. You know, my character name is Graham. You know, uh, you could be able to catch him next week on Empire again, and then I'll be on there. You know, hopefully I'll be on season four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Hello. ten. Fox, y'all yeah, holla at me. Real. You know, Senna. <laughs> Speaking yeah. of money and family, is it true that your mom is suing you right now? Yeah, uh, that's been out there. Uh, yeah. Uh, out there for a while but it's not my mom it's more of her lawyers they seen an opportunity mm -hmm. if i was my mom goddamn lawyers i'd do the same thing too i'd be like look you need to go after your son too et cetera et cetera yeah, because they be want a the most yeah. money. list of everybody wow. yeah and, and that's, that's why i don't go by the house anymore yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, man, they put everybody in this lawsuit. Yeah, but that's the thing. What happens is, you know, you people see greed. In Hollywood, people want money. People wow. want a successful life. People want to be the biggest star. Mm -hmm. And that's what sucks about it because this is what I want. I wanted this life. My dad wanted this life. He could handle it. You know, but when you have brothers and sisters and family members that's associated with the life just because you're in it, a lot of things are going to get tested. And mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing to any kid out there. Once you're chasing your dreams and you're chasing success, you got to know that you may not be the one that get tested. You may pass everything with flying co colors, mm -hmm. but your family will be tested. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the ultimate test right there. Do you. you see it getting hard for, for, your, for your little brothers as well? Um, honestly, those little kids are little superstars. <laughs> yeah, they, are. they get it. Like they're really smart. They understand. I think a lot of kids in this generation, they're a lot different from when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're a little bit numb to certain situations. And I don't think because my dad do a great job with them. You know, they know what Hell it is. Yeah, and they know they does. love their mom. They know that it's sadly it's business. You know, mm -hmm. they see these lawyers and people trying to take advantage. They see it every day. When was the last time you talked with your mother, Romeo? Um, it's sad. Like probably a few months ago uh -huh. so our relationship is one of those things where you kind of got to just pray and leave things in god hands mm -hmm. because people don't understand you know it's like i do everything for my mom mm -hmm. if it was up to me it's like i'll give i don't care like I, money comes and goes mm -hmm. you know everything i have i'll give to my mom so it's one of those situations where you got to want the best for yourself and somebody got to help themselves first or you'll jump in that water and you'll drown with them mm -hmm. so i just want the best for her and it's one of those things where she has to realize that her family's always going to be here. I'm going to be here. And uh, it's one of those things where I just want to tell her I love her because right. I don't talk to her every day. Mm -hmm. Because it's one of those things when you have a family member and they're dealing with life and they're going the, the opposite direction, you could literally get burnt putting your hand in that fire. Mm -hmm. And if I fall down, the whole family fall down and collapse. Right. And, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty sure you put your hand in that fire many yeah. a times mm -hmm. because... It's moms. And that's yeah. what we do as family members, man. That's it's the like, only damn reason I going. put my hand in that fire. Yeah. It's my yeah. mom. Yeah. You, know? you know what I'm saying? So. And, and and it goes it gets to a point where it's like, damn. And not that you back away, but it's like, you know, I'm here when you step out of it as well. Yeah. And that's the I thing about it. this show, you know, uh, growing up hip hop on We TV, I, we let you in. And, damn. And you get to see like how I deal with that. Because people don't realize I still have to go work. Mm -hmm. I have to be on Empire set. I filmed seven movies coming out next year. You know, I got, I'm working on new music. So it's like, I have to work on top of balancing family right. and not the best uh, of situations. And sometimes you got to be the master of disguise, too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and the the work that you do is print work. Yeah. So we're always looking at you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And and you got to make sure you're a master of disguise. It could be yeah. and people don't understand, man. Sometimes it could be the worst shit going on in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got to show up. Yeah. And man. That's the beautiful thing. I, I definitely these past few years, you know, God has been there. For me, mm -hmm. you know, I found God just times. I've always been day one, you know, in church every Sunday. But it's like, as long as I wake up each morning, that's the biggest blessing. Let me you ask know? you this, Romeo. How did you, unless they didn't become public, how did you avoid a lot of the pitfalls that we see? Mm -hmm. Like, like I don't really see, you know, man, yeah. Rome was out hella hell. drunk or he got arrested or he got fist multiple fight. babies. Yeah, yeah fist Doing fighting drugs. or shot yeah. at somebody. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like, man, wait, y'all may need to... Fly to Mexico. I got about four out there. <laughs> oh, no, <man. laughs> no, but out the country. It, 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 is that Fly the to family Italiano, structure? You know? hey. Nah, uh, is that the family structure? Pops being right there in, in, in you guys' chest as well. Yeah, it's one of those things where when I was growing up, my pops was on me. You would have mm -hmm. thought like he don't care. Like he was on me, and he didn't care if I was making this much money. If right. I was little Romeo, he was always my dad. So I've always had. I was big on respect. And growing up, I realized I never wanted fame. I do what I do because I love it. Like you said, I don't have to do, I don't have to do none if I don't want to yeah. at the end of the day. I do what I do because I love it. And I think there's a different appreciation when you're doing things like that. And I, I give a lot of credit to my little brothers and sisters. I'm the oldest of uh, eight kids. Mm. So I've always wanted to be a role model to them. And that rubbed off in my career. And it's not easy making the right decision. There's been times where I remember when I was younger, and I was supposed to like, do an interview with Oprah and all this stuff. I'm going to college and everybody say, you know, you're doing the right thing. Everything's going to pay off. But then you start seeing that other people get ahead who's doing negative things. Mm -hmm. And people tell you they want you to do the right thing. But the person who's doing the right thing kind of get looked past. 
And for me, you know, I always knew that everything's going to happen in perfect timing. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. if I always try to do the right thing, if I try to do my best, you know, everything's going to happen how it's supposed to. And it's not easy. So what know, happened I'm with not, the Oprah thing? You know, uh, you to be continued. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was wondering if it's you coming. blew it off. Or it was no, but it's crazy. Was... Like, you see Rihanna and, like, Chris and people get a, they, they get approached because domestic violence, something negative. Right. But it's like, why can't we celebrate positivity? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. Even when I come back to music, I'm coming back this year. I have a new single called Shoulder that'll be coming out next week. I want to be like that Bob Marley. I want to be that person where when you hear a Romeo Miller record, it's going to bring you happiness. It's going to bring you away from your reality. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's just what I wanted. Like, I always loved politics, too. As a little kid, people always said I was going to be a president. I so I was that. always class president. So I always just try to do my best. I'm not perfect. You know, I got my flaws and everything. But, you know. What do you but, feel about the election yeah. year that's going on? Oh, man. Man, I wish you would have ran politics. right now. Yeah. I vote for Jesus. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, right, no. right, Jesus name Jesus, in. Honestly, real. with that, um, with both of them, I think they're they're actually good at what they do. I think Trump's good at business. You know, I think Hillary's good at being a politician at her level. Not necessarily that doesn't mean they're going to be good at being our president. Because what people don't realize is that to be the president, you got to be well diverse. You're representing everybody. Mm -hmm. And the thing with them, they're not honest. You know, um, honesty is key. You know, I'll see Trump getting questions asked about, you know, how do you feel about women? How do you feel about African-Americans? It's like, look, be honest. You're a white billionaire, man. Say back in the day you was a little cocky, you know, young man, <laughs> you know, own up to it. Mm -hmm. We may respect you more. And right. then with really? Hillary's the same with hiding the emails. Who erased 33,000 emails? Right. Just be like, look, that was some top secret shit in there that right, 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 the yeah. world know. Yeah, we'll yeah. respect you more. But I just think what we need is it's, we don't have to be able to relate to each other. It's just about living in peace. Mm -hmm. In this generation, we think we have to understand. A white kid can't understand me fully. You know, a Chinese kid from Asia can't understand me fully. But they could, you know, they could uh, try to just live in peace with me right. and know that I have different struggles. And I think this election just is too personal. You know, mm -hmm. we're not focusing on the right things. And it's just about us living in peace. We don't have to be able to yeah, relate to each It seems like we have really... In the last year, 18 months, we have taken a step, a couple steps back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And the whole Make America Great Again and everybody's slogan and stuff, like, we, we need to really take care of this jewel that we that we call America. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Because all eyes are on us as well on what's our next step. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, man, Romeo. Well, I got the perfect solution, man. Uh-oh. Oh. Vote for Dwayne The Rock Johnson. There we'll it is. <laughs> there it is right there, man. <laughs> Might as well. Write it in. Yeah. Your basketball game. Yeah. Your game, <laughs> for, for, for cats that don't know, your oh. game is vicious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you ever think about NBA or did that pass you up or Man. there was something that didn't click? No, that was my whole life. The thing that didn't click is in life, every choice makes, you got to pay a consequence for mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. People don't understand. DeMar DeRozan, one of my best friends, and uh, at the time, like he wasn't, that highly recruited you know he was somebody I believed and he was my best friend and we wanted to hoop together but I had offers from like Florida State from mm -hmm. Washington so for me if I wanted to go the basketball route I should have went to a place where it was going to be more about me mm -hmm. you know USC was a place where we wanted to go we wanted to you know we're best friends and I got stuck there with a coach who a new coach came in who didn't respect me he was like mm -hmm. You make more money than everybody at the goddamn school. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. a coach asked Later. that to a 19 year old. And the mm -hmm. last day of practice, I'll never forget. This man said, you know, Romeo, you're supposed to be our starting guard, but I wanted your scholarship. He said, all I wanted was your scholarship. So I just wanted you to quit or just hand me over your scholarship. And you would have wow. been the starter on his team as a walk on or something like that. Wow. And it, it hurt me. But even my dad to this day, he's like, you had to go through that for a bigger reason. Mm -hmm. God was preparing you for something bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked my ass off. I gave up my career to go to college. I was in basketball practice, 5 a.m. class. Pl being a D1 athlete, I take my hats off because it's hard. Yeah. You know, it's like you're working yeah, yeah. three jobs and you got to go get perform and get great grades. So when a coach say that to you, like all you had to do was give me your scholarship and you would have got what you deserve. It, it, it sucks, but that's oh, life. Yeah. And that, that could take the air out of wow. you. Yeah, because yeah. some people always, if they have authority, they're going to abuse it. And that was the biggest thing I needed to know. I had to know that no matter if you're doing everything right, if you're doing your best, that guess what? Sometimes you, you may not get the result you want. Mm -hmm. That don't mean you quit. 
Mm. And for me, that's what, this is what I really do. Mm. I got teams right now wanting me to go to their D-League teams. I got teams wanting me to have, uh, give me 10 days to come work out with them and everything. You know, so this is what I love. But this is a learning experience for me. And that's why my little brothers are the top players in the country. Mercy Miller is the number one 10-year-old. Yeah, Lord my have My brother, Mercy Miller, top 20. Yeah. These kids already. Y'all get the names, Hersey. Yeah. <laughs> Mercy. Yeah, but yeah. Miller. Pops is Percy. Go, okay. go, go Google them boys. All yeah. I'm saying, they the future. So I give all my blood, sweat, and tears and knowledge to them. And I look, I know I'm supposed to be an entertainer. You know, everybody in my family sits three or taller except me. You know, I'm right there at six foot. You know, it's like God was, God was like, look, I'm going to make sure. Because if you sit three, six, four, I'm coming out to LeBron. Yeah. That's all I need. Right, yeah. I would have been D. Rose in this thing. Would have been no questions asked. But that shows that. Everybody has a purpose, and whatever that purpose is, you got to follow that. Because your little brothers are getting tall, too. Yeah, they now, six man. foot already. Oh, That's wow. a crazy. 13 year old, he's six Ooh, foot beast. Damn. And shout out to Mar DeRozan, though, man, the best two guard in the league. I know y'all wanted them at the Lakers. I know y'all heartbroken about that. Man, <laughs> you, you wanted them there, too. Right. Now. Hey, Don't I, get it I, I like him. No, Lakers my favorite team, but I like him at Toronto. I mm -hmm. feel he could be the Kobe Bryant. Ah, oh, you could have just jumped in the car team. and went to all the games, though. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you want to let out of convenience. <laughs> Romeo, you, you've been in the business for a long time, and yeah. we've seen a lot of things that were just crazy frivolous. Yeah. What is that one thing or a couple things that you spent money on that you would look back and be like, man, I was young? Oh, man. Man, I was young. Well, I was about a... Uh, I'll say about ten years old with oh, this God. one, but I spent uh, twenty five thousand on Pokemon cards. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's I love so it. cute. Twenty five thousand. Let me tell you, those Charizards and yeah, that Charizard, the little shiny the one. Shiny back ones, in the shiny one, the three D one. Ooh, I was I was selling them. I was getting money. It was an investment. So what I'll do? I'll buy wow. all these Pokemon cards and I'll go back to school and I'll sell all the best Flip cards. Em. Yeah. So I actually made like 50 grand oh, at the end okay. of the day. Oh, okay. and I had well, a stash pot. 10 years old. What, what about the car that was the, like the Romeo? Was it a Benz? Oh, oh yeah. my first you car. You couldn't even drive it. I, hey, you down south, you could do anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and especially the property y'all had. You could drive yeah. nine miles just on the property yeah. you're No comment at. on that, but yeah, we start early down there. But, I heard that. Yeah. Where's, where, where's, where are those cars at now? Uh, some of my grandparents got those. You know, they be they be like, "Damn, who's that in that lime green bin?" Yeah, oh, that's Romeo's you know grandpa <laughs> right there. Man, what about uh, C? What about yeah. C Miller, man? What, what what's what's the contact? Yeah, with C right now. It's one of those things where you know I pray for him every yeah. day. You know, uh, that's my big uncle right yeah, there, man. and he, he's in jail for something that he didn't do. You know, that's that's a problem, and that's why it's so important too. With this election, we got to make sure we voting for the best possible choice mm -hmm. because a lot of our, you know, African-American men are in jail for crimes they didn't do. So uh, that's one of those things where I pray for my uncle. You know, I can't wait to get him home. Mm -hmm. He's going to be home really soon because he, he is innocent. But it's one of those situations where everything you do in life, people try to pin things on that. You know, having a rap name like C, C Murder. Murder, yeah. Ha having this event, uh, this, this uh, thing happen at your event. That's why my pops don't like to go out. People don't know my pops one of the biggest music modes. This man don't smoke or drink or party. Right. He only go to a club appearance if he getting paid. You know, that's going to cost you a few, you know, cute, mm -hmm. cute bags right there. But it's like every decision you make, it you got to pay a cost for it. And sadly, my uncle was in, at the wrong place at the wrong time, mm -hmm. you know, and he's been serving time for something that he didn't do. So, you know, when shout out to my uncle. the last time you saw him? You want to know what's crazy? I just saw him in my dream last night, That's and cool. I was walking with my uncle, and it was kind of like a, um, it was a remembrance of the last time I actually seen him at my great grandmother, Big Mama funeral. Uh, they let him out because mm. she was like his mom. Mm -hmm. She was the the anchor behind my pops, mm. C, Silk, everybody, the whole No Limit family, and they let him out. And it's sad they still had him handcuffed, but uh, he was able to come see her, you know, go away into a better place. But I relived that moment with him in my dreams. And that's how I know something good is coming. Do you, you ever know? go visit them? Uh, it's one of those things where I I don't I don't get out there. Like right. our life is like people see us, but it's like this life is constant. Mm -hmm. It's like if we fall down, we're not gonna be able to help anybody. So it's been one of those situations where I've been working, 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 trying to build and trying to build. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we do what we can. Is it hard to see him like that, or do and do he not want his yeah. little nephew to see him like that also? Because you know, um, there's sometimes where It'll be like, man, you'll look up and be like, damn, I haven't talked to her. I haven't seen such yeah. and such for a while. And it's not like you go out and say, man, I'm not going to see him for yeah. a year. 
No, it's I'm not going to say it will fire yeah. you. It, it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, people growing up, the one thing I realized is that I see why Peter Pan said he wanted to stay a kid. He didn't want to grow up because you have real life problems you got to mm-hmm. deal with every day. It's already hard just being out here trying to live life. You know, people look at me. It's like my career. I'm not here just because I'm Master P's son. Like that would have lasted right. a year or two. Right. I've been in this business for 15 plus years. Yeah. So I got to get out and got to go work. And guess what? Just because you got money, you got to make more money. Mm-hmm. You know, we got bills. People look at us like you got this amount. But it's like we got bills, 200000 500000 1. 1.5. And that's what people don't understand. You got to maintain certain things, which yeah. means you got to work. And when you work, you are busy. And it's one of those things where I got cousins that's locked up. Like I said, my favorite cousin, you know, my right-hand man, you know, Carlos Daniels. He would have been here with me today. He's the most talented rapper we had on our label. And, you know, I haven't seen him, but it's one of those things where it's always in my mind. They're right. always in my prayers. Right. And we know that, you know, they're going to they're gonna be home real soon. Who's the best in the NBA right now? Who's the best in the NBA? Like player, team? Player. You know, I'm asking, I need to be like a sports analyst, I think. I have a little <laughs> hip-hop sports analyst show. Oh, this is what hey, I do. do it. No, we may need to make that happen, man. Go ahead now. But, um... You said best Take player. Take my hours. No, <laughs> <laughs> best player in the NBA, man. I mean, the obvious, LeBron James. Okay. Like, you got to take your hat off to that mm-hmm. man. What do you, you think see? about the movement with Durant going up to uh to the Warriors? Well, I, I'm a very independent mind frame. You know, my pops always say if they could do it, we could do it. So, you know, for me. I would have liked to see him stay with his his team and right. like get them over the hump because they was right there. Actually, they should have been in the championship. Yeah, but it's one of those things where you got to make the best decision for, for you. you, and he know what's the best decision mm-hmm. for him, and he know he's 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 getting older, and people don't don't realize he have a bad uh, foot injury that he went through. Mm-hmm. So he probably don't want all that pressure on him. He probably need a little bit more help. So for him, I think it's amazing. But I'm always uh, I grew up with Master P, you know. This man sold 85 million records independently. So I'm always had that independent mind frame where I want to do it my way and I want to do it with my team, you know. Mm-hmm. So 85 million records. Yeah. Independently. Crazy. Yeah. That's you don't crazy. realize Given that's why I got major this major label. Yeah. That's a crazy. dollar or two off the record. <laughs> this and movie keep is it important. 10, 12, 15 for himself. Exactly. That's why I got to make this movie, you know, it's going to be definitely crazy. We're working on his story right now. Uh, we got some big things coming, you know, Master P, King of the South. And this is like the Wolf of Wall Street mixed mm. with the Mafia, mixed with mm-hmm. NWA. Because you got to think, though, yeah. man, like a lot of stuff that your family did was a lot of blueprint, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I remember years ago, Rome, years ago, I was doing Players Club with Ice Cube, right? Yeah. And your pops was there and he just wanted to just to be there and to walk on road. You know what I'm saying? We know P. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, that's Master P. But it ain't PP yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't Master P yet. So he would stay on set all day. Mm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just to be around there. And, you know, and then when Q put him in the movie, so, but he was soaking up knowledge yeah. and getting next to, to the right people as well. Yeah. But I remember he came to my, uh, to my trailer. And me and Master P, your pops, we sat down. And he had, like, a folder. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, he said... Well, you know, people hear, you know, people hear my accent, they, you know, from because I'm from the South. They think that this, this, you know, yeah. and but he <laughs> knowing what cats are thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then he opened up his book. Right. And he was saying how with BET that they charged him. He bought five years of commercials yeah. at one time. So wow. his rate <clears throat> was nothing. Yeah, and right. he was That's like, right. I'm going to be here for five years. Yeah. So he blocked yes. all that time. Right. Yeah. And then he was one of the first cats that I saw when you opened up his album cover. You had the album that you wanted, and then in the album cover was the next projects that were coming. The next few projects. You know what I'm saying? Few projects, bro. Wow. So you always seen that. And then the whole blinging out the earrings, and you know, and a lot of people took that too. Blinging out the earrings and just like crazy stuff early on. I remember sitting with him in my trailer, Everything he said, he did. Yeah. Mm. Everything, bro. I mean, when you name your label No Limit, when you name yourself Master, Mm -hmm. you got to realize that your vision is much bigger than right now. Even to this day, my dad, I have ideas, and he'll say things. I'm like, Dad, you tripping. He'd be like, watch and see. Mm -hmm. His vision is crazy. 
And that's why he is a pioneer. That's why he was able to do what he did. People don't realize selling 85 million records independently, that'll never be done again. Never. Making hundreds of millions. This man the first rapper to wow. make 100 million. Like, that's a big, that's the reason rappers now have their lifestyles. Right. right. They yeah. should be thanking them. Cause and the deals that they have, too. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? The like, like, and the deals that they yeah. have. So he's a hell of a business. And man. you got to think, he went independent. When yeah. no one wanted to right. be independent. Exactly. You know what I'm That's saying? That's what I'm saying. That's our but motto. If they could do it, we could do it. I remember sitting yeah. down with him and he was talking about the independent game, right? Yeah. And he said the way that he did his contract, he said that, you know, the label that he was messing with at the time, mm -hmm. he said that they thought he was crazy when he said, I don't want any of your money. All I yeah. want is distribution. So the average artist, you lucky. You had a great deal as an artist if you got $2 yeah. a record. Yeah. You had a great deal. And I'm talking about you can have 15 people in your group. It don't matter how many people you have in your group. If you got a, a dollar or two, then you 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 was cool. Yeah. If a record sold for ten dollars, Pops was getting eight off the rip. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Eight off the rip. Shooting the video, yeah. and you got to think when that yeah, dude bro. did um, the movie, uh, uh, body body, body, body yeah. and my man said, banned in theaters. Too yeah. hard, too hot for theaters. Everything, and people went out and we bought VHS tapes. Yeah, and that movie was never gonna go to the yeah. theater. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it was too hot for the for the yeah. theater. Yeah, no, and that's everybody the, had that. Yeah, and that's the thing with my pops. It's like I I truly feel that hip hop need those. It's like basketball, any sport. They have mentors. It's like hip hop don't really have that. We got a lot of artists that's coming up. They're gonna make money, but who knows how to keep money? Yeah. Who knows how to, you know, about financial literacy and all this stuff? And I really do feel hip hop do need that. And I think my pops is that person that can guide any artist and make them reach their full potential. Yeah, man. Because you know what? And, and whatever goes down in legal papers and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But anybody that questions if there's still some money. Lord have mercy. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Just Lord have just mercy, Google. man. <laughs> just Google Lord have that's, mercy. That's the master, man, yeah. for a yeah. Besides his like business knowledge and being like a great mentor to you and to other artists, what is something that we might not know about your dad? Closed doors, no cameras, Sunday afternoon. He do a Bible study every Sunday at that's the crib. Sweet. And then on top of that, the man favorite restaurant is McDonald's. <laughs> Really? really what does he order? His, his, he go to McDonald's, man. I'm trying to get him off that diet. Like He's there often? every day. Every day. Every really? day? No way. Does he own one? That's probably one of the, <laughs> the deals right there. Yeah. What does he yeah. order? He get Big Macs. Oh, that's man. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Because we went to go eat one. one day. I should have known. I would have. Uh, you could have been like, I would have went to McDonald's. Spot. Hell yeah. Maybe yeah. it could have worked me a hell of a deal. Exactly. <laughs> Let me ask you this, man. Do you feel like your pops get the respect that he deserves mm. today? You know, it's one of those things where in the streets, you know, we could go anywhere. You know, people respect him. I always say my pops, when I'm, this dude is one of the most respected men on this planet. But with the younger generation, they just don't know. So when it comes to fame, yeah, the fame respect, I wouldn't say, because Michael Jordan don't even get that side. People look know, at Steph man. Curry and LeBron and say they're the greatest, the greatest. ever. They so memed I just think, my man yeah, out. Yeah, so I think this is a generation thing where, you know, the kids respect now. They don't really care about who did it first yes. or mm -hmm. who paved the Say way. It. And that's why I'm here because I want I want to relive that history. I want to teach kids about the history because that's only going to make us stronger as people. You know, that's only going to make you stronger in what you want to do. But that's why this movie is so important because once people see his story and they see everything that he accomplished, it's crazy. Like, I'm looking at the script and I'm looking at everything he accomplished. We got a big book like this. It's like, how did one man do this? Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's one of those things where I feel nobody in this generation, if they did it before, they don't get the proper respect that they need. And that's why I, w I want to come to this game full throttle. And like when I'm doing interviews, when you go support a Romeo Miller record, a Romeo Miller movie, it's going to be bigger than me. You know, I'm I'm part of a generation where I'm trying to teach kids as well. And I think that's what a lot of people in this generation don't do. They don't want to give props off to the person who did it before them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to take my hat off to who did it. Even me, like, chasing this acting dream, the Will Smiths and the Denzel Washingtons and Terrence Howards. It's like, I do this because of them. Mm -hmm. Most people are going to be like, once they make it to the top, like, they got there yeah. by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Like, Kobe Bryant and LeBron James was inspired by Michael Jordan. None's wrong with saying that. 
The only reason you're here because of Michael Jordan. That next little superstar going to be inspired by Steph Curry. You know, the whole damn rap Jane. industry was inspired by Master P. You know, mm -hmm. you look at anybody from Rick Ross to Drake, and I take my hats off to them, but it's like they're doing that in a way to what my dad did, you know, 15, 10 years ago. 20. Damn yeah, you, you know listen, what I'm saying? Yeah, you listen yeah. to any rap. I think the rappers in the community, a lot of people get it and they respect them, but the generation as a whole, you know, I just think kids don't really care about respect as much. It's mm -hmm. about now. Romeo, no yeah. kids for you, huh? No kids. Strapping that yes. thing up, huh? <laughs> Go ahead, Girlfriend, bro. anything? Uh -huh. What I've been oh, with yeah, Morgan. I got a girlfriend. Her name is uh, Tiana on Empire every mm. Wednesday. Go ahead, Nelly. Hey, there you go. Every Wednesday, you can catch that line. thing. You feel me? <laughs> and you say you got a gang of movies coming out 2017 yeah, I got a, yeah, as well? Yeah, I got about seven films coming out. Uh, adolescence, this you know, teenage love story. It's a dark story, but it shows how you can't let love consume you. You got to grow as a person. So we got that coming. I got action movies coming. Uh, you know uh, what I love about it, too, though, Romeo, man? Is that you stepped into your man roles? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, what movie was it where you was like the love interest? Where old girl was when I was, was a it? cool girl hunter? Yeah, what movie was it? Was <laughs> it Jumping uh, the Broom? Yep. No, no. I, it, what, oh, was it, it was, Jumping the Broom? No. Which one? Um, Damn. Not Jarhead Three, huh? No. Brotherly Love. No. Probably Jumping the Broom. Was it? That's Jumpin when I was the chasing. Uh, yeah, I was chasing uh, the older woman at the wedding. I guess so. Yeah. Was, yes, it was. Yeah, jump in the broom. Yes, it was. But yeah. just, just to see that man, where like we don't say Lil Romeo ever. Yeah. Nah, you know what man, I'm saying? You, you just say Romeo yep. or Romeo Miller. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and you shook the ism. Even today, I was looking and I saw an old picture and I was like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> like you you've done your career very well, man. Yeah. And and, and I see you continue to yeah, work continue extremely bro. hard, mm -hmm. man. And and you've come up when all eyes was focused on people not wanting to, but, you know, seeing somebody either fall off, get in trouble. You know what I'm saying? And and we got to really say what's right with hip hop. We always yeah. saying what's mm -hmm. wrong. Exactly. But we got to look at you also, bro, and say, man, this dude is 26 years of age now. This is a man. And usually the years that we've seen you work hard, those are, and excuse my language, those are the fuck up years. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Because you start to turn around at 25 saying, oh, yeah. man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We, I didn't see anything hella crazy. Man, I'm just waiting until I hit 50 plus. I'm going to go wild. And then you go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be the opposite, like, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be like, man, I done did all that work. Now yeah. let me go mess it off. <laughs> like, man, he's 53. Why and he's, out? He's having his first baby? Like, oh, what? Man. Good <laughs> Lord, man. Y'all ever go to them freak parties in his house? <laughs> But no, but even when That's you pull dope. up by the crib, man, it just yeah. be y'all. It just be the kids. It yeah. just, you know, it's like a, re it's, it's family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When I see Pops, he's with his kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't never seen Pops just in the club with some female or something random. Yeah. I ain't even been with your pops where he bent his eye and been like, oh man, check her up. Yeah, be, nah, you know. I'll tell you a story about Special pops. Rhythm. and this We don't have time, but thank you. Next <laughs> 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 time, next time. Right. Right. No, go ahead, go ahead, Romeo. <laughs> Cold world, man. Now my dad was on a video set and they had a girl basically half naked and the dude's like, look, I, I want that, you know, to send her over here. My pops pulled one of his artists. He said, if you think about touching her or disrespecting her in any way, you're going to have to deal with me. And this is just a video girl. Oh, and he that. treat everybody with respect. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been many times. This dude, that's why he, he is where he's at now. Because yeah, he truly do the right thing. Anybody, I don't care from his prime to now, mm -hmm. you know, this man do the right thing. And that's why he's continually blessed. I heard that, yeah. man. Romeo, thank you for coming yeah, into bro. the neighborhood, man. man don't forget. Y Growing up hip hop, oh, yeah. every Thursday Ooh. night, we TV, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern and Pacific. Oh, yeah. oh wait, I got a very important uh, announcement. Please do. What's up? I need everybody to follow me on my Instagram at Romeo Miller. Thank you. Oh, so you, <laughs> so you was able to get Romeo him. Miller, huh? There it is. Yeah. yeah, I was trying to sit on that <laughs> Romeo Miller thing and sell it to you. You know what I'm saying? So you at Romeo Miller. At Romeo Miller. I got to go ahead. Everything gotta, you need to know right there. All right, I got I to gotta start following you as well then, oh, yeah. man. But Romeo, thank you for coming yeah, into the neighborhood, grown man. Hey, all righty. It is Big Boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy. Hey, boy.